Hello, here we are with Willie Torbett in his studio. Thank you so much for joining me. And um, thank you so much for having me. Yeah, so as you know, we're here because uh, the Lisa Ur Curry Art Collection is being bequeathed to St. Francis College. And we're doing our first show this fall, Mirror, Mirror on the Wall. Um, and you'll be a part of that. So That's great. Thanks so much Proud for this. Um, so you're a paper collage artist, but you work an array of mediums. How many sort of mediums do you think you work in? Wow, there's several actually, but I believe at this point in time in my career, which spans like oh, maybe 35 years or better, oh, wow. um, I think I'm known more for collage than anything else. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of times, um, with all the, the mediums that I work in, I go through spells. Like, I'll mm -hmm. do collage for like a year or two before I even do a pencil or you know a drawing or a sketch mm -hmm. or even a watercolor. And then, you know, and then uh, but the collage thing is like. I, I would call it my favorite medium, but I love graphites and pencil too. As you can see, I have some around here, oh, one there. You know, I, I love pencil. But know. so you do you sketch any of these works first before kind of just working on them, or is it just here we go? Here's my canvas, and you just dig right in. Well, you know what? It's kind of two of the same mm -hmm. because actuality. Um, I'll do probably a number of sketches for references. I'll go on a, um, online and do some research about things I'm interested in. Like I wanted to see the facades of uh, jazz clubs back in the 50s in Harlem or something like that. So very specific. Yeah, like, and I was like, wow, that's what I want, that collage. So I'll take some sketches and, and take some of that, you know, yeah. for reference and stuff like that. Um, but I, I love all the mediums, but it's just that I feel that the collage opens up, you know, not for me. Personally, as an artist, it's probably my favorite medium out of out of the others, because mm -hmm. if, if I would be a practitioner of pencil or watercolors, if that's what I wanted to do, yeah. Because I'm kind of stubborn; like it got to go my way, not your <laughs> way. I just hope you're able to enjoy what I produce. But um, the collage thing started for me in 1982 or 81, rather, when I went to the Brooklyn Museum, and it was an exhibition of the late great Romer Bearden. Oh, okay. You know, that was the first time I ever physically saw collage work, really yeah. live pieces, not yeah. print, not paper or book, but the actual pieces. And they, they could have been maybe um, 40, 50 pieces on an exhibition. Yeah, at a Brooklyn Museum, mind you. And um, and I looked at it. I mean, I stayed there for a couple of hours because I'm, I'm a Pratt student. Around 81, let's say I'm like sophomore, junior at Pratt mm -hmm. at that time. And... I wasn't an art major. I was a fashion merchandising and marketing major. So you started off in fashion marketing? I sure did, because I love fashion. And I still love fashion. As you can see, look at the suits on these gentlemen. This haberdashery down to the shoes, French cuffs, rings, hats. And you were saying that all of these patterns, you make these all from scratch. I these sure are, do. So you, you dye your own paper, you create all these patterns. And are they specific towards what you're creating at the time? Or do you have sort of like this collection of dyed paper and graphites that you've made? And if, if it works for the piece, it works for the piece? Or is everything specific? Mm. Well, generally it's specific mm -hmm. because I have a certain concept in mind. And I'm thinking about something. And it has to be in a way that, okay, this has to work for this particular piece. Just like this piece right here. You know, that's an indigenous symbol. It means you know, femininity and, and power. Okay. Like, you know, and so just it, sort of that like woman empowerment, like yeah, this, is, big this time. is standing for that. Oh yeah, big time. I love that. that that's important to me. Now were you were were you doing that at the time that you first met Lise? Were when when you and her started your sort of artist collector relationship, was that a part of your practice? Well no, that this series came later. Because if I can recollect, wow, how long have I been doing these? Oh boy, it, it's been a, it's more than fifteen years. That you've known Lee. Yeah, I mean, I knew her son before he passed, Archie. Mm -hmm. That's my dude, man. Oh, I didn't and he's know out that. of Brownsville, Brooklyn. He passed away at forty-nine years old, and um, we were getting ready to hang out at the HBO fights because he was a top executive at HBO. He said, hey, Willie, man, have you ever been in ringside? Play? I'm like, no, man. Do you want to go? I'm like, hell yeah, I want to go. When? He said, no, man, I'm going to hook you up. I said, bet. That's Lisa's son. That and so you knew him before you ever met Lisa? No, I met him. 
through movies. these. Okay. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely, definitely. And then, so when the what was the first piece that Lise had collected from you? Oh, the first piece Lise collected from me was a piece called Five Deep. Mm -hmm. You know, and I was actually showing at the Sabaku Art Gallery on East Thirteenth Street between Second and Third Avenue. You know, and actually she represented me for years. And and what happened? It was Laura James that Lise collects as well. Mm -hmm. Good friend of mine, amazing artist. Um. Laura James came to my show and she called Lise on her phone. She said, Well, Lise, you gotta come see some of Willie Torbett's pieces. These collages are crazy. Oh, so Lise took a car over and she came. And Lise walked up to the piece and like, oh yeah. And I didn't even meet her yet. I'm just watching <laughs> this little white woman like, like what's she talking about? <laughs> she oh, had yeah. found her piece. Yeah, that was, she did. Which is kind of crazy that works perfectly into mirror mirror on the wall it, yeah. we're examining how her collection starts how a piece of art can just it's a strike to the heart it really yep. affects you it you know you sort of see yourself in the work and you're so connected to it that you want it to be in your life and that's how she collected she sure did the first piece. and then from there she um collected several pieces we did shows together so it's it's sort of a great connection to that's our connection to lisa that, that that's it that, that became our artist and love affair and jazz and music and being around each other and laughing a whole lot. I mean, we laugh and we cry sometimes, man. You know, I mean, I spend a lot of time with her, not even around a social thing. It's just her and I. It's, it's grown yeah, into man. a friendship. So Absolutely. a lot of people are always sort of intimidated by the art world when it comes to starting to collect or artists going into them and making themselves vulnerable to sell their work. How does that relationship and like a general sense compare to how Lise approaches situations? Well, you know, good point, Bertie, because the thing is that I'm, you know, I could probably speak for several artists. A lot of times when someone collects your work and um, they're not trying to be your friend. You know what I mean? And yeah. and you get it. Mm -hmm. Like a few collectors, you'll call, hey, how you doing? And everything's all right. Yeah, but um, I'm a little bit busy now. So I hear from you. I'll call you soon. Yeah, a year go by. You don't hear from this individual. And it's just complete silence. Yeah. So I, and I would say a majority of collectors, or whatever they call themselves, <laughs> at least is the real deal. Yes. All right? I can't speak on everybody else. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But um, it, it's like, I'm not trying to like, be the friend. I've, I've sold hundreds of people mm -hmm. in my career, decades of doing that. I, I can't be your friend. Not even on FaceTime or <laughs> any of that Instagram or social media shit. But I'm just saying that, thanks for the support. It was nice knowing you when I met you. Mm -hmm. I'm an artist. I'm constantly moving on to the next. Mm -hmm. To the next. To the next. Yeah. The next client. The next opportunity. The next commission. Where is it? Yeah. Is it on Mars? Well, let's buy up. <laughs> Go get that money. But I mean... You know, so it's one of those type of things. Now I'm in Jersey. I'm in beautiful Freehold, New Jersey. Gorgeous, gorgeous town. Yes, it's very nice. You know, a little quaint town. On what I checked, maybe 10,000 residents. So it's small. So do you do you connect well with this community? Very much so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, very much so. And they've pretty much opened themselves up to you. You've been able to really move forward in your career here, you would say? Absolutely. I've done a lot of business out here. Actually, a um, significant amount of business out here over the past maybe four or five years. Mm -hmm. And um, I've been blessed by the people of New Jersey, the Garden State. Yeah. It's truly a flower over here, that's for sure. <laughs> and it's beautiful. And I mean, a lot of my people are lawyers, they're doctors, they're professionals, they own businesses. And, and they're great, man. You mm -hmm. know, I hang out sometimes at barbecues in their houses and stuff like that. And um, But that relationship is, is, I feel like you can earn or you get so much more out of them really understanding the artist and knowing the Absolutely. artist than just collecting it and moving forward. But you're still here, you're still making work. Is there anything new and exciting that's going on in your career that you want to share with us? Wow, I would uh, share this with you, um, culminating with my 60th birthday, which is coming November 22nd. Congratulations. Thank you so much. And um, it's gonna be hopefully culminating with my one-man show at Detour Gallery on Clay Street mm -hmm. in the heart of downtown historic artistic district, Red Bank, New Jersey. So New Jersey right. again. Yes, Just New Jersey. Love, New Jersey. Jersey. love here. It'd be my second show there too. But we coming out, you know, as we said, as my man, brother, 
my brother Schwartz says, that's, we got to kick ass, man. <laughs> we got to kick ass. Make sure every piece you do kick ass. Yeah. I want you to grab me by the collar. I want to feel you. Mm -hmm. I say, I will not disappoint. It's going to be good. I promise you, we coming in for 60 we coming in hard. And it's going to be great and vibrant and wonderful, like all of your work that you have here in your studio. Thank you so much. Bert. And we're just Appreciate so excited that. for you. And thank you. Thank you for being a part of Lisa's collection and being a part of the show. And, and thank you guys for filming and taking the time out. And thank God for Lisa. I love her with all my heart and soul. And uh, that's my soul sister for sure. You know what I mean? And um, hey, man, we're here. Lisa, I won't disappoint. I'm going to make you proud of me. You know, we, we accomplished a lot together. You watch my career grow and leaps and bounds. And you also watch it slow down every now and then. But I'm still here doing my thing. And I'm so proud to have you as my friend. Yeah, you're a collector, but you're more my friend. Yeah. So good. She's here you. for her artists. And Absolutely. I love that. And we love her. We love her. Love her to death.